If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. Last week, we celebrated 5,000 subscribers on this channel and I asked you guys for some questions so we can do a Q&A session. And in this video, I am going to answer or try to answer all of those questions. This may take a while. This may end up being a really long video. We'll see how it goes. And then at the end of the video, I am going to announce who won my palette giveaway that I announced in that previous video. So stay tuned for that. Some questions were quite similar, so I'm going to bunch them up and therefore I'm not going to say who the question is. You guys will know if I'm answering your questions. So here we go. First question is, have you tried gouache? If so, what did you think of it? I haven't yet and I really, really want to try gouache because my first medium that I got into was art was acrylic and I learned a lot about layers and stuff and that's a lot of fun and I want to get back to that and gouache sounds like the ideal medium for doing that but I am waiting till I go to Japan so that I can pick up some Holbein gouache cheaply because I've spoken to a few people and they've said that the Holbein gouache is one of the best out there and I know I can get them really cheap over in Japan so I'm just kind of waiting until I can get hold of of those first. Next question is, when were you diagnosed and how do you manage it with doing art? I'm gonna assume you mean the bipolar because I have several diagnoses. I have bipolar, ADHD, dyslexia, um, all sorts of other things, but I'm gonna assume that you're talking about the bipolar because that's what I talk about the most on this channel. And I was diagnosed with that, I think about when I was about 26, it was in my mid 20s, I went through a really, really rough patch when I was 26 and I realized I needed to get some professional help. So I went to hospitals and got myself diagnosed so that I could understand what was going on with myself. And that made my life a lot easier. In terms of doing art, I actually find that art helps my bipolar in that it gives me a source of energy when I'm depressed. It gives me something to focus on and do and when I'm manic I can pour that excess energy into art rather than into something destructive so I actually feel that art is helping my bipolar rather than I'm managing to do art despite my bipolar. Next question is what made you decide to do a YouTube channel and well you can blame Denise from In Liquid Colour for that one because I did have like a kind of a YouTube channel before that talked about journaling but like it was dead I hadn't done anything in about a year and then I sent Denise some Holbein watercolors that I'm sure you've seen over on her channel and she said she was gonna make a video and that she was gonna refer to my channel I was like okay I better have something to show that is watercolor related so that when you guys came over to my channel it wasn't like a desert of anything to do with watercolour. So that's how I actually got started in making watercolour videos. So it is totally thanks to Denise for roundabout encouraging me to start this channel. Next question is, do you prefer painting with the paints you've moulded yourself or paints made by brands such as Daniel Smith? I actually don't have a preference one over the other. I just use them as needed. When I first started mulling paints I really wanted to make the bright colours that I really liked but then I realised that there's not much point in making colours that are already available or colours that I already have and can get hold of easily. It's actually more interesting to make colours that are less commercially available than like the thalos and the quins and stuff. Also like the really bright colours, the thalos, the quins and the transparent colours are really hard to mull. It's very difficult to get it right and I haven't managed to get those right anyway and it was like well do I carry on doing that when I can just buy those bright colours that are perfectly made already commercially or do I actually focus my energy on creating paints that are more difficult to get hold of. And that's where I'm finding the joy in making paints now. So that's where I'll be focusing more and more of my energy. And so I feel like my handmade paints just fill a niche where commercial paints haven't filled yet. Thank you so much, by the way, for all of you guys that send me so many 
warm comments about reaching 5,000. It's just so lovely to hear all your kind words, so thank you so much. Next question is, what is my favourite watercolour paper? And you guys know that I use Bockingford as my main paper. Now, I did get a question on a different video going, why do you use Bockingford over cotton? And my answer to that is I just can't afford to use cotton paper for everything that I need the papers for. I go through an enormous amount of watercolour paper, both in terms of creating my own art as well as creating all the test sheets that I use for the videos and also all the dot cards for the Patreons and everything else. I can't afford to do all those on cotton paper. I know Bockingford paper really well and I'm comfortable with it and I'm happy with it. So for now, financially, I'm okay with Bockingford because it fills that niche of I know what I'm doing, I'm comfortable with it and I can afford it. In the future, I'd love to be able to move on to being able to afford the cotton paper in the quantities that I use for my own painting, but I'm not quite there yet. Next question is, what is your favourite smell and why? Right now, like from autumn all the way through winter, my favourite smell is like Christmassy, winter tea spice kind of smell. I love teas that have that kind of winter spice smell. I can't have mulled wine because I'm allergic to alcohol and I used to love a tea called Winter Spice by Pickwick but I can't have that anymore because that's a caffeinated tea and I no longer drink caffeine. So I am on the search for a good non-caffeinated like winter spice clove and cinnamon and all that spice smell tea so if you know any then do let me know in the comments down below next question is what is my unusual art supply or something that isn't technically an art supply but you use it to make art for my art the most unusual thing i do use is gauze you guys know that i use gauze all the time and i use them in the test sheets as well and yeah i think that's the one that is the most unusual thing I use in art that is a non-art supply. Next question is, are you considering doing watercolour book reviews? Probably not. The only reason why I say that is I find it very hard to learn from watercolour books. I find it much easier to learn from watercolour videos and so I know what works and what doesn't work and stuff for videos but not for books and you kind of need to be able to understand what works and what doesn't work in order to do a book review and if I can't tell what works and what doesn't work because the whole format doesn't work for me I need to see the movement and what the artist is doing and stuff rather than read in words because I have dyslexia I just need to see things rather than be put into words and so probably not just because it's a format that I don't really understand well myself and so I feel like I won't be able to give you guys a good review of any books. Next question is what is my all-time favourite colour and you guys know it, say it out loud, it is Daniel Smith's Quinacridon Rose. Next question is what is my favourite triad for painting and that will be the Aurelian by Holbein which is a hue colour so you don't have to worry about light fastness, the Daniel Smith's Quinacridon Rose and Thalo Turquoise by Daniel Smith. I know that's not technically a triad, but those are my top three colours. Next question is, which step of your creative journey are you the most proud of yourself for having taken? It's probably taking the leap to have a creative coach early on. When I first started on this journey, like way before I started making any art or even realising that I wanted to be an artist, I took the leap and hired a creative coach online, a wonderful lady called Jamie Riddler, which I will link down below to her information. And we worked together for two years, just getting through the layers and layers and layers of resistance and all the misinformation that we learn from society, like, uh, you know, being an artist, you don't make any money being an artist is not a real job blah 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 blah. all those things she worked through every single one of them with me and 
I had a ton of resistance like I couldn't even hold a charcoal with my bare hand whereas now like charcoal is one of my favorite mediums and I know that without those two years of working with her I would have never even got to the place of start creating art let alone becoming an artist and I also know that that was the hardest part emotionally like it was a lot of emotional work of the creative process so I think that would be my proudest thing her name is jamie riddler do check her out she's such a lovely lady she is really really wonderful next question is what is your favorite part of creating seeing the colors i love 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 colors it's what got me into art is seeing colors so that's my favorite part next question is given that you are a self-directed learner i love that word which class would you most highly recommend to others? I think it depends on what level you are at. There are loads of really good courses out there, but it just depends on where you are. My main philosophy with finding good online courses for yourself is two things. One is that you like the teacher and or two, that you like their style. If you have at least one of those things, you'll be fine and you'll enjoy it. If you like the way that somebody teaches, then it's fine. You're going to enjoy listening to that person and you will learn a lot of things from them, regardless of whether you like their style or not. If you like their style, but you don't like their teaching style, well, you're already motivated to just get everything out of that person that you need fast. So you can kind of put up with bad teaching. The problem is if you don't like the teacher and you don't like the style then it's really really hard to get through that kind of class and when you do encounter those kind of class I highly highly recommend that you give yourself permission to just quit like I know you paid for it I know you were supposed to learn it but just quit it's fine there are plenty of other teachers out there that you're going to get on with so much better so just don't worry quit it move on find a better teacher next question is do you plan to continue the tiny house drawing as a series on Instagram in any form, not only in ink? Um, no, I've already quit that series. It was just a little foray. It wasn't really a series. It's just, I'm just playing around and seeing what sticks. And I've actually stopped sharing my work on Instagram for right now because I've figured out that I was connecting how I felt about the piece with how many likes it got, which is a really unhealthy thing. It's a bad place for you to be in terms of how you value your art. So I've, I'm taking a break from Instagram. I'm just sketching away and stuff and then sharing with you guys because we have way more interesting conversation about the piece and what I'm going through rather than just likes. You know, that means nothing. And even if you like get hundreds of likes, if it was lower than the previous painting, you're going to feel bad about this one. It just doesn't make sense. So I've actually stopped sharing them, but I will share my works with you guys on my weekly vlog instead. Next question is, I wonder which properties do you think is most important for a paint? I would say transparency and granulation because that dictates what you can do with those paints the most. I think as a beginner you get into a lot of sticky situations because of the transparency issue and layering colours and then it not working out because it was way more opaque than you thought it was going to be or vice versa and also granulation can be an unwieldy thing if you haven't encountered it or if it shows up all of a sudden when you didn't want it so i would say those two things are the most important things then of course there's light fastness but you can worry about that later next question is how do you think your health struggles have contributed to your art and also has creating art helped you manage your emotional health i've kind of answered that already but the question of how do i think the health struggles have contributed to my art it's definitely slowed me down which is very frustrating because i found something that i'm very very passionate about and i want to get on with it and then i can't because of my health however i am also grateful for it when i'm manic and i have loads of energy and i can just crank out pieces no problem so 
it's a bit of a give and take. I can't fight bipolar. I just have to learn how to coexist with it in a way that isn't detrimental to myself. So yeah, it's it's not helping, but I'm learning to live with it. Next question is, would you consider giving away your handmade paints for 10K subscribers? Probably. If I have enough to give away because handmade paints have a cycle of its own, if it coincides and I have some, then yeah, probably. Next question is, how do you find the motivation to do art when in a depressed phase? That's really hard. Like, I find that hard. And I would say, first, to give yourself permission to not make art if you're not up to it. Because when I'm depressed, I keep going through this really long phase of feeling guilty or frustrated or whatever that I'm not making art. And that doesn't help the depression, right? So we need to give ourselves permission to go, it's okay, I'm feeling depressed, I'm not gonna do art. Now, if you really, really wanna do art that is separate from the guilt, then I would suggest doing small things. For me, when I'm depressed, it's easier to do things if I can do them in bed. So I scale everything down, I buy a small sketchbook, get like materials that I can use in bed so things like ink and pens I do small pieces of art like a level and a scale which I can manage without feeling overwhelmed or exhausting myself next question is will you be doing any brush reviews in fact I do have a brush review coming up next week hopefully I haven't really done brush reviews before because I've only got experience with two brushes my main brushes and but I've been sent a Paul Rubin's set of brushes so I will be reviewing those and I'm definitely up to doing more brush reviews. Have you considered voice acting audiobooks of some sort of podcast? You have a very soothing pleasant almost meditative voice oh that is very very kind of you but I have to say no I haven't. I have a lot of complex because English isn't my first language so I always feel like I'm not doing a good job and I know there are pronunciation issues that I have in my own speech. So I don't think I feel brave enough to be doing like audiobooks and things. But I am so glad that you guys find my voice soothing and relaxing because I think that's a really good place to be when you come to create art. Next question is, what did I teach as a lecturer? And the answer is computer science. I was a computer science lecturer and I taught all the way from first year, or I think you guys call it freshman, and uh, all the way up to master's level from introduction to programming and research methods and also human computer interaction and child computer interaction. Next question is any video ideas you had to scrap or otherwise put on the back burner? I think this is a really common thing in YouTube and if you work in a relatively small niche like watercolor or whatever is that you are planning to do a video or a big series and then somebody else that is in your YouTube sphere and do similar videos with you, make those videos first. And you're like, oh, okay, I need to scrap that. I've released videos and then realized that somebody else made a video about it like the day before and I just hadn't got around to watching it. But I have definitely scrapped like series ideas and stuff or put it on a back burner because somebody else just released a video or a series or something else on the same topic. And that's gonna happen because there's only so many things you can talk about in watercolors. Next question is, how many watercolor palette does one need? I live on a very limited income when it comes to making purchases outside of my monthly expenses. As I watch the videos, I see artists with so many different palettes and I became concerned that I am not going to be able to be a successful watercolor painter. I was thinking about purchasing one tube of artist grade watercolor paints a month. That would be 12 a year. Would that be a viable option to build a good palette? I'm so confused and intimidated 
thank you for your help. I totally get you. Okay, there's several things to address here. First, I have a lot of palettes and I have a lot of watercolour because that is my job. It's my job to show you guys different watercolours, so I literally have hundreds of tubes of watercolour. However, that does not make me any better watercolour artist than somebody that has only 12 watercolour colours, okay? All you need to become a good watercolour artist is one good watercolour palette. And the same goes pretty much for all other YouTubers that make watercolour videos. We have those paints because you guys want to see them. It is our job to know about different watercolours and have like hundreds of different colours at our disposal so we can show them to you. That has nothing to do with us being a watercolour art. Next thing is 12 is ample number of watercolour paints. I base my palette on 12 colours and 12 colours around the colour wheel is all you need if you know what you're doing with them. And in the previous question we talked about putting a series on the back burner and unfortunately that was one of the series that I did put on the back burner to talk about how I design my palette and how you can select certain colours so that it gives you an easier time in colour mixing. I feel like it's going to double up with Denise's Skillshare course at the moment and so I'm hesitant to bring that out because I don't really want to tread on her toes but you can definitely create good palette with 12 colours. You can create a good palette with 6 colours so don't worry about it. Just maybe learn about colour theories and colour mixing theories first so that you get the right 12 colours. And if you want to know what my 12 colours are, just go back to the videos about what's in my transparent palette. Look for the colours. I have the A, B, C, D, E labelled and then the A, B, C, D in parentheses labelled. Those are my 12 colours that I base everything on and those are the only colours you need if you know what you're doing with them. You can even make muted colours like yellow ochre and burnt sienna and all that from those 12 colours. Next question, next question is what is your favourite part of becoming a full-time artist on YouTube? You guys, you guys, just the community, the YouTube watercolour community and all the conversations we have on videos and just you guys are like the nicest people around. I've always seen myself as incredibly socially anxious and not good at getting on with people and what I've realised is that I just didn't find my tribe before and I think you guys are my tribe. You guys get me, you guys totally get like where I'm coming from in terms of being obsessed about colour and pigments and wanting to test everything thoroughly and stuff. Now I feel like there's somewhere I belong in. So yeah, definitely you guys are my favourite part of becoming a YouTube artist. Next question is how did you get to where you are now with your watercolour skills? I feel a bit weird answering that question because I don't feel like I have that much watercolour skills. However, all the art knowledge I have have been gained from online. I have not gone to an art school or taken art classes in like the real world because I have a problem going outside on my own. There are so much information out there and that's where I get them from. Next question is what would be your top choices for a warm and a cool primary palette and that will be the Daniel Smith's introductory set I think it's called. The one where it has the two yellows, the two reds and the two blues. That's all you need. It is a perfect split primary palette. Just like, don't bother looking at other things. It's it's great. Just get those. When you said something about when you were in your early 30s, I was a bit startled. I figured you were in your late 20s to early 30s. Um, I'm actually 39. I'm gonna be 40 next summer. So yeah. <laughs> next question is, who is your biggest art inspiration? And that would have to be Van Gogh because his use of colour was amazing and it's the one artist who when I stand in front of a real painting by him I just cry so yeah. Next question is what is your favourite city or place in Japan? My favourite city would have to be Kumamoto because that's where my mother's from and it ha it's, it's the home of Kumamon and I love Kumamon like Kumamon is amazing 
he's just gorgeous and wonderful and i love him and what's your favorite art supply shop in japan and that will be sekaido sekaido is freaking amazing it's just a tower of art supplies just youtube or google sekaido and just see how amazing it is it is where i get my art supplies from when i am in japan go to the one in shinjuku the the flagship store is the best one next question is how do you deal with artist block when your muse doesn't want to come and play quit social media stop comparing and then just spend time do things that is about getting in touch with yourself and you won't have an artist block and also work on resistance identify what resistance you're going through say it out loud and then figure out ways of seeing how ridiculous that statement is and then figure out how to get rid of them i find that comparison monster is the biggest artist block causing thing and that's what i'm doing right now is i've started to feel really overwhelmed by the comparison monster i'm gonna take a break from social media and just i have so much more time when i do that and then i get to hear my own voice and i get to be centered with myself and then i get to hear what i'm interested in exploring next we all have that voice we all have that desire they just get drowned out by social media and comparing with perfect people on social media next question is what is the doctor for in my name and that is for a phd in human computer interaction next question is what is my favorite memory from my childhood and the answer is i don't really have one because i had a really really rough childhood um and so i kind of tend to block them out i've dealt with them or dealing with what happened but it's also why I get really uncomfortable when strangers start speaking to me in Japanese. I really don't like it because it just takes me back to that time and place and stuff. So if I'm not warm to you to for speaking Japanese at me, it, that's why. I'm totally okay. Like if I know you and you want to learn Japanese and we've had that conversation that I'm totally comfortable with you like testing out Japanese words at me and stuff but if you're a stranger I feel really uncomfortable when they start talking Japanese at me just because I'm Japanese I see myself as English and English is my safety so yeah so I know that's really weird because Japanese is my first language but that's why I find that really hard to deal with. Next question is, which do you prefer? Making paints, painting, or testing colors? Testing colors, like definitely testing colors because I love colors and I love seeing colors and what they do. That's so fascinating to me. I of course love making watercolor paints, but that's because I love color as well. So it's like a means to an end to getting nice color. And that's how I got started in making handmade paints in the first place because I wanted a particular ultramarine blue that behaved in a particular way. Next question is how long did it take you to make the palette you are giving away uh, all the colours ones you have made? There's one colour that I've made which is the ultramarine blue because I haven't found a good commercial ultramarine blue that I like and so my handmade blue is what I have on my palette and it's a copy of my palette. The others is quite easy because it's just a copy of my palette and so it didn't take that long at all. Next question is when did you start making art? And art itself is about two years ago and watercolour is exactly a year ago this month. Next question is I've watched your painting in different style which I all very like. Thank you very much do you sometimes feel inspired by artists and add something from their style into your paintings so there's two layers to that one is seeing a piece of art that somebody's done and trying to incorporate their style into your art which i don't do i'm not saying it's bad or anything it's just not something that i do where i get inspired by other artists and bring that into my art is when i take a class and they show me what to do and then it's like oh cool yeah i'll do that but i don't connect seeing a style and then just figuring out what to do 
and doing it for myself i need to be shown how to do it i'm a very technique based person so i love seeing techniques being shown techniques trying out techniques and then bringing them into my own style so it's more that i enjoyed doing that technique so i'm going to bring it in rather than i am inspired by this person so i'm going to bring it in next question is what inspires you most or what is your favorite thing to paint does abstract count because that's not a thing but i feel that that's where i'm most comfortable at and that's where i'm happiest at next question is i'm also very curious about what paints and colors are in the palette and hope that you'll make a video about that i already have i will link it to is it that side or that side? that side i think yeah i'll link it there no it's gonna be over here next question is are you good with strangers i mean say i went to scotland and saw you painting out somewhere if i end up if I went up to you and said, hi Otto, I subscribed to your watercolor channel, my name is, would you be okay with that? Okay, here's something you guys need to know. I suffer from incredible social anxiety. Like I am super, super awkward. I can talk like this to you and make eye contact with you because I'm just looking at a camera that's here, right? In reality, I am really, really awkward. So I don't know how I would handle that. Like I know I'm gonna be super awkward just because I have my own social anxiety, not because of the situation, but because of my own situation. If I run away, don't take that personally. <laughs> it's just me being really socially awkward. Next question is when you are painting, do you sketch your image before painting? And if so, what do you use? Yes, I do do sketches first. Sometimes I use the photo blue, the Prisma Color Erase Copy Not NP Blue. And it's one that basically after you've done all the painting, people don't really see this blue. The other one I use is the Stedler Carrot Aquarel. I will link both of these down below in the description. And this one is a water soluble black pencil, which means when you go over with paint, it's going to bleed black. And I really like that texture. So yeah, usually one of these two. Next question is, what was the first artist grade watercolour you bought or used? Did you like it? Did I buy a Windsor Newton one? I think I might have bought a Windsor Newton one and no, I didn't like it. Then I bought a Snellier set that was really expensive and it had way too many colours and I got overwhelmed and I didn't know what I was doing. What got me settled down was Holbein. I was in Japan, I bought some Holbein and I just put together a palette of colours that I just liked and that got me settled in and started liking doing watercolours. I wouldn't recommend beginners to buy big, you know, like 40 plus colour set as your first watercolour set, even if it's an affordable one, just because having that many colours is actually really overwhelming. Stick to somewhere between 12 and 18 is a good number to have. Hello, it's the next day. I had to stop filming because the studio was such a mess. I couldn't handle like focusing on what was going on without tidying the studio first. So we're back with a much tidier studio and it looks pretty much the same like from here above but like the floor was a chaos before so let's carry on with the questions first question is how did you get into making watercolor paints i got into making watercolor paints basically because of ev from eve bolt channel because she has lots and lots of videos on her experience in making watercolor paints and it was just fascinating to watch and i think when you use a medium so much especially things like watercolor you do start wondering how it's made and watercolor is one of those mediums that luckily is very easy to start making at home so that's how i got started with making watercolor paints next question is how were you introduced to such an amazing medium watercolors i don't really know i started off doing acrylic and then oil was out of the question because I can't handle the smell and 
so watercolor seemed to be like the natural other wet medium that i could explore and i really liked the idea of watercolor because it wasn't as messy as acrylic you know you let the paint dry on the palette or the brush and it's not that big a deal and the cleanup is a lot easier and i really really did appreciate that next question is will you ever do a studio tour i have done a studio tour it was for the patrons and you are my patron the person that asked the question so if you go scrolling back down it was really early on probably back in may or june sometime it is there if you have a dig through and that shows you absolutely everything in my studio next question is what tip do you have for someone new to using watercolor paints i think just paint the only way you're going to learn actually learn to paint is by doing the painting and my favorite teacher she's an acrylic painter but she said paint a hundred paintings and then paint a hundred more because that is so true that it's the only way you're really going to understand the medium next question is what did you wish you knew when you started i think that it's totally okay to not like a teacher and just say i'm not going to do this class because i put myself through lots of classes that a i didn't enjoy the content or i didn't enjoy the teacher just because i thought i should know this stuff and it was really really painful what i didn't realize was if i search hard enough there's usually somebody else teaching that same thing probably in a way that works better for you or you know just find another topic that you like you don't have to know everything there is to learn about art even though our brain tells us oh you should be able to do everything you don't have to at all just do what you feel like doing and what comes easy to you next question is what is your favorite daniel smith color you have tested so far and what color haven't you tested that you want to besides my favorite daniel smith colors that you guys already know i think the surprise colors that i really got to learn to love from doing the tests were definitely the transparent red oxide and brown oxide they're such good mixes and they're wonderful i will link a video to the transparent brown oxide one here and you'll see how lovely they are to mix with next question is if you could have a full tube of manganese blue genuine or queen gold genuine which would you pick oh that's a really good question i've had several people offer very kindly to send me the quinacridone gold genuine and i've been turning it down purely because i have an issue with preciousness and if i feel precious about a paint like if there isn't an unlimited source from which i can go and buy more i really struggle to use them and i get really precious and protective and it's just not a good place to be for me emotionally however that's because i know i like quinacridone gold whereas manganese blue i'm not that particularly that bothered about so i'm thinking it's pretty safe to have a tube of a manganese blue genuine just because it's not a color that i'm gonna fall in love with anyway so the problem with the preciousness won't really get in that way next question is which aspect would you change about a color that would make you put it in your palette or love it more example for me ultramarine is a great and useful color but i'll definitely love it if it was not granulating if you don't like the granulation of ultramarine blue i highly recommend using the sailor blue red shade it's what i use as a substitute for the ultramarine when i don't want granulation but that's not your question i would love opera pink and i would totally have it in my palette if it wasn't so fugitive i think a lot of fugitive colors like alizarin crimson i would totally have on my palette if it wasn't fugitive so yeah definitely down that route of certain colors if it wasn't so fugitive i would totally have on my palette next question is could you tell me from your opinions suggestions on how to support him i think this person's partner has bipolar through the depressive times and not cause issues during the manic times first of all 
every person that has bipolar or depression or anything like that they go through a very different experience from somebody else so what i go through in my depression and manic phase and what helps for me is going to be different from what's going to be helpful to your boyfriend the biggest thing you can do though that is more universal in terms of how helpful it is is to open a channel of communication with your partner about what can i do for you when he's feeling better he's not depressed or manic or even when he is in the throes of it just constantly have conversation with him what can i do for you what would actually help you when you're depressed or when you're manic because i'm here for you and so please tell me what would actually help now if they are in if the throes of depression or manic they might not be able to tell you because their mind is just completely taken over so it's a really really good conversation to have when he's not so manic or depressed but this is like an ongoing conversation that my husband and i have when i think of something that would help me i let him know and you'll figure out a tool set between the two of you that will help both of you next question is did you have any other favorite medium before you started using watercolors and yes i started off doing art with acrylic but i'm also a huge fan of doing charcoals i think charcoals is a lot of fun it feels like i'm sculpting image out of the paper because you get to rub away and add more and rub away and add more and i really really like that process of being able to redo things and correct things and make it deeper shallower and all that that i feel that watercolor doesn't have as much freedom you kind of need to know what you're going to be doing when you're going in with watercolor next question is how do you handle the anxiety if and when having an artist block i know what you mean when you're having an artist block the anxiety is the biggest thing first of all as i said before cut off your social media go on a social media break because that is the biggest anxiety like increasing thing to see so many people doing amazing work when you are in an artist block and not creating anything at all definitely take a break from that and also just remove things from your daily practice or your life that is causing more anxiety because more anxiety isn't going to help the situation after that it's just work on accepting that this is a ebb and flow process i think it's a lot easier for me as somebody with bipolar because i have an extreme ebb and flow of mood and productivity anyway but art is exactly the same in that you're not going to be constantly producing work at a high level you are going to have times where you're creative and full of energy and making stuff and then you're going to have a dip because you're burnt out or you're just tired or you've run out of energy and you need to take a break and also refuel your well by doing whatever it is that you need to do to refuel your wealth next question is is your work ever inspired by japan and the answer is yes i am mostly inspired by japanese calligraphy brush because i was trained in japanese calligraphy since i was a small child and so i understand that medium really well and i'm fascinated by the expressiveness of that brush and ink and the movement of the brush when you understand japanese calligraphy you really feel every breath and every motion that has gone into producing those words on paper and it is a, an amazing art form and i try to incorporate that energy into my zen series which is on my website on otokano.com where it was about ink and just huge energies exploding on paper next question is how do you store your paintings well uh you see this box this one here that's where i keep my paintings that i haven't framed up for anything which is probably not the best thing to store them like this don't follow my example on how to store paintings do store them flat if you have the space 
Next question is, what are the ways you use to translate the ideas you have onto paper as actual drawings and paintings? I just paint. I mentioned this in, I think, last month's Patreon Q&A video, which you can find on my Patreon page. I'm not very good at doing sketches and prep work. I tend to just dive in and paint and draw things which can get you into trouble but then it's fine it's just painting i'll just paint another one and do it better next question is how did you become interested in working with watercolors well i already mentioned that i found watercolor to be much less messy than acrylic was but also i really like the color and you know i'm all about the color rather than actual more painting painting i just love colors and i think color addicts tend to congregate towards watercolor it's the one medium like no other medium have so many pigment nerds as watercolor does we love color and i also love the luminosity of the paints and i love the different characteristics like transparent colors versus opaque colors and there's so much science and experiments to be done and i can't resist an experiment if you haven't noticed so yeah it's just a fascinating medium all around it has color and then the science bit and all that so it's it's very fulfilling of both my creative side and my scientific side so it's perfect for me next question is a really good one is there a mineral you wish daniel smith would add to their primatech range oh how about labradorite labrador labrador i can't pronounce it but you know the one that i mean because i wonder if the shimmeriness of the labradorite why can't i say that word would be fascinating as a paint although i suppose it's a mica thing i don't know maybe yeah what i do really wish daniel smith would make though is a lapis lazuli paint that is actually of a decent blue next question is how do you get yourself motivated to draw paint outside i find myself getting nervous at the thought of being outside painting and having people see my art but i'd like to do some urban sketching i'm totally there with you i don't like painting outside or drawing outside or anything i just if i see something i want to draw or paint i just take a photo take it home and do it in the comfort of my home because if you draw in public people will try to sneak a look and they think you're not noticing it but when they're walking right behind you really close are really slowly passing by guys if you've done this we've noticed you i've tried drawing and painting outside twice in my life and both times that has happened multiple people came and did that so it's just for me as someone who has social anxiety already and i have a problem being outside on my own it just doesn't work for me next question is what is the biggest challenge when creating your new job making paints and filming videos and what do you like most about it i think the biggest challenge is definitely my health and that kind of getting in the way if i'm ill often then I don't have as much time to dedicate to my business as, as I want to. Making paints and filming videos is wonderful and I love doing that. What do I like most about it? I touched on this before, the community and getting to speak with you guys and see you guys and stuff. That is definitely the most fun bit of doing this job. Next question is what is your favourite watercolour brand? And that would be Daniel Smith. I, I know that's a surprise. You might thought it's Holbein. Holbein I like because of a practical reason that it's incredibly cheap to get in Japan. But if I could afford to use Daniel Smith the whole time, I totally would because Daniel Smith's colors, apart from the couple of ones that we've talked about over on Primatech range series, is beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's so bright, but it's so expensive in the UK. <laughs> so yeah it's a treat more than a basis next question is if you could meet any artist living or dead who would it be and why i would say i wouldn't meet them partly because i remember liz gilbert the author saying you should never meet your heroes because they're actually are just normal human beings and it's disappointing when you do 
whereas if you don't meet them you know you have your hero still nice and safe tucked away in your mind and I also have a huge social anxiety so even if I saw an artist I really love I wouldn't be able to go up to them and talk to them I would be so starstruck I'd be like almost stalkingly watch from the distance and not say a word to them but if I really really had to and I didn't have social anxiety then I would say definitely Van Gogh because I just want to give him a big hug and say it's okay. A little bit of a sidetrack but my favourite Doctor Who episode is when Doctor Who meets Van Gogh because at the end Van Gogh actually gets to see how great his work has been appreciated and that's what I would love to do for him is to show him like that it wasn't totally hopeless and that his art was going to be loved and that he was going to be loved which I feel like he didn't get enough of that in his life while he was alive so yeah Van Gogh and then a Time Lord with a TARDIS and then take him back to the Orsay so that he can see his own exhibition Next question is, would you consider the chance of making some video about Japan related arts? Ooh, yeah, I'm definitely up for that. However, because I grew up over here, I don't have much knowledge, so I'll have to do some studying. I mean, like I have general knowledge of Japanese art and stuff, but I would definitely have to do more research. But yeah, I'll definitely be up for that. If there's anything you want me to make videos about relating to art in Japan then do let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do for you. Next question is how do you know when a manic episode is coming? I know when a manic ex blah, blah, blah. I know when a manic episode is coming when a I start shopping loads like I sp start spending loads of money which is not good b I start putting more and more hours into work without feeling tired. At the early stages of mania I feel fantastic and fabulous and like mega intelligent and whatever the whole grandiose thinking thing happens so I feel great and so when I feel a little bit too great I'm like okay no like I'm spending I'm buying more stuff I'm feeling great like a little bit too great this must be mania. My next question is, have you framed and kept one of your paintings for yourself because you have such inner joy enjoyment when you look at it and just cannot ever sell it or give it away? Yes, I have. They're all abstract paintings. It's what I love the most, I think. So I've framed them and I doubt I would sell those because I just really love living with those paintings. Next question is, if you were free of all financial time, space and material commitment, what outrageous art event would you enjoy creating or participating in? I would put on an exhibition of all of Van Gogh's work. I was really fortunate enough to see a Van Gogh exhibition at the Orsay perfect when I was in Paris and that was such an amazing experience but I was totally aware that there were certain pieces that weren't there. I then traveled further on to see those pieces and it would just be amazing to see all those pieces in one place. Next question is maybe more about your background. I see your doctor which I've already answered earlier or where are you from, live now etc or day in the life for your vlog. I'm definitely up to doing the day in the life of vlog if you're interested in seeing that so do let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do for you. In terms of where I'm from and where I live, I was born in Japan and then I came over to the UK by myself when I was 10 and I've lived in the UK since then. So I'm coming up to Jesus, 30 years living in the UK. I think next year? Wow, that's a really long time. And I currently live in Edinburgh because I really love this city and Scotland is just a beautiful country and I love the people. The people are just so much more chilled and cool than England. Next question is, I would love to know how you organize your day if you have tricks to stay efficient despite being self-taught working from home and being a spoonie. The biggest issue with me organizing myself is the spoonie part. Because I'm a spoonie that dictates 
everything my bipolar dictates everything my health dictates everything so what i don't do is i'm going to do this on monday and morning and this on in the afternoon and tuesday i'm going to do this and this and this and i don't do that because i don't get to work that way my body has other ideas about working so it's just frustrating and i constantly feel like i'm failing if i have task assigned to days and then I can't do them so I don't do that what I do is keep a weekly to-do list and I just get as much of those done as I can because that's the only thing I can hope for is that I get as much work done as I can but I like that because then I get to pick what tasks I will do depending on my energy level, my mood and my pain level and stuff. Definitely allowed me to be A, more productive ironically and B, feel better about myself because I'm not failing just because I haven't done a task on a particular day. Next question is, do you get hyper-focused on a project often? So this person has ADHD and I have ADHD as well. And we have a tendency to like really get into a project. Ironically, because the, the common misunderstanding is that we can't focus on anything. We can, we can focus on things really well. You just got to give us the right stuff. And yes, I used to do that a lot. Actually, having started becoming a YouTuber and having videos to create on the regular and balancing other things like paint making and my creative practice has actually helped me stop being so super hyper focused on certain projects. I don't have the time to get really into a topic for a video. I still have to make two other videos that week. so that has really helped me getting too deep into something next question is what is the difference between horizon blue and turquoise blue since they are both contain pg7 and pb15 and pw6 let me get my swatches out for you this is horizon blue and this is turquoise blue um in the daylight you can definitely notice that the horizon blue is more opaque then the turquoise blue and maybe that the horizon blue has a little bit more red than the turquoise blue like a very very subtle fraction of red in this one than in that one but i would say otherwise there's not the biggest difference i think is the opacity in that the horizon blue is more opaque than the turquoise blue i hope that helps Next question is, where do you get the nicely printed test sheets that you use to test individual paints? I make them in Excel, really basic, and then print them here at home using this printer over here. Next question is, the, what is the difference between peacock blue and Taylor blue? This is Taylor blue yellow shade and this is peacock blue. And the first difference is that this has PG7 and this one doesn't. But you can kind of see in the color difference that this is a more warmer blue in that it's got more red. And this is a more slightly turquoisey color and a cooler blue because of that. Next question is, have you ever tried Da Vinci watercolor paints? If you have, what do you think of them? I haven't yet. I have not really ventured out outside like the whole Brian Sennelier, Daniel Smith basically because I've been working so hard on doing the Daniel Smith series. Once that's done, I am looking forward to trying other brands and seeing what they are like. Next question is, which brush do you choose most often? That would be, let me grab it. I think these two, which is the Pro Art Proding Plus in size eight and 10. I think I use the 10 most often. It's cheap and cheerful brush that actually lasts really well and it doesn't hold much water but it has good control of point and stuff so it's a very practical brush. Next question is what did you dream of becoming when you were a child? First dream job I had was a fashion designer and then I found that that my mum actually trained as a fashion designer and she highly recommended that I didn't bother going into it because it's I mean 
you see fashion deni designers burn out so fast because of how fast moving and how demanding that industry is. And then like the first real, like I'm gonna study for this kind of dream job was actually working for NASA because what happened was I watched Apollo 11 with Tom Hanks and I was like, I'm gonna be those dudes on the ground. I, I, I knew I would never be a astronaut, mostly because I've never been a fit person. I wanted to be down in the control room with the headset and the mic thing and like standing like this kind of thing with my sleeve rolled up and stuff. <laughs> so they were like my heroes. I actually started a undergraduate degree at University College London for planetary science. Unfortunately, that degree didn't work out because my grandmother basically died like a month into the degree and I just fell apart and I had to take a break. And then I transferred onto a computer science course at Queen Mary, but it turned out well. I ended up with a PhD, so I don't think that was a bad choice at all. But yeah, like working for NASA was like my first real goal. And man, I wanted that goal so bad. Next question is, can you make a video, either time-lapse or chatty videos about painting abstracts in watercolor? I actually have a live stream that I did with Dan from Penholder Art UK that I will again link whichever corner the thing shows up where I actually taught him how to do some basic abstract techniques. Next question is, what is your top three Primatech colors if you could only pick three? Hmm, let me see. So these are the primitive colors that I've been working with and I really, really love Jedi, which is coming up in a few weeks. So the light because it's practical, blue appetite because it's a nice blue and then Jedi, but then purple right is so nice. Can I pick four? Then I will pick Sod Light, Blue, Appetite, Purple Right and Jedi. There we go. Next question is, what is your favourite go-to thing to paint when you are blocked? Which I think is a really interesting question because for some people it's different. And for me, my favourite thing to do when I'm blocked is to go take a class, learn a new technique and try that rather than a subject. I've always been a technique based person, so that's how I get motivated to create a game. Next question is, who would you like to be the first reviewers of your marvellous new line of watercolour paints? Well, I've sent some samples to Ev from Ave Bolt and also Denise from In Liquid Colour. And I know Ev is doing a review of my paints very kindly for me right now. So I'm sure you'll see some review. And also some lovely people have done early reviews of my paints, which I will link down below as well for you. Next question is, is there a particular art piece that you have created that has made you step back and realize that you've grown as an artist? If so, what was that piece? I don't think I've had that piece yet. I'm definitely growing as an artist, but I'm also a very beginner at painting itself. So yeah, I, I've not had that piece yet. I'll let you know when I do. Next question is, we've seen your favourite colours, so what are your favourite mixes? I think any colours that you mix with transparent red oxide or brown oxide. Just try it, promise you, really nice colours. Next question is, how do you bring the skills of being a computer scientist to your work as an artist? Besides actually using computers to edit and stuff, I don't feel like I'm using computer science to what I am doing now. But my training was in usability and I tried to put that into the videos so that the information are provided to you in a logical manner as best as I can. Next question is what paint pigment experiments would you like to do in the future or what would you like to see other artists test? I've been working on micas and making mica paints and making good solid coloured mica paints and that has been a pain in the neck and I haven't managed it yet. I can make weak 
micro paints it's sparkly but not much color and i don't want that i want solid colors so that's a project that i'm working on off at the moment in terms of testing i just want to test all the colors to be fair i would make a video on every daniel smith colors and other colors if i thought people would watch it but i think 200 videos on daniel smith colors one color per video would be a bit much and the same goes for other brands but i just love testing watercolors next question is do you have handmade paints for sale and if so where do i buy them there will be hopefully early to mid next month depending on how quickly the paints dry and then they will be on autocana.com but if you want to be notified of when that comes out and so you don't miss out on the sale then do sign up over on my mailing list at my website thank you next question is i've really enjoyed your videos especially the ones comparing daniel smith colors will you be doing any more of them we're going to be moving away from comparing just Daniel Smith colors for the next season of the color showdown because that's what my patrons voted for. They decided they would prefer to have a cross brand comparison for next season. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to have big color showdown where we're going to compare the same colors from different brands. And we're going to be taking the color name rather than the pigment because partly because Denise already does pigment comparisons, but also I feel like as beginners, we tend to rely on color names rather than pigment codes. Pigment code knowledge kind of comes in a lot later and I want to be able to make a video that is useful for beginners as well. Next question is, how do you improve your art skills? Is it just through experience with your materials or do you practice your skills in a more structured way? I believe in learning in a structured way and then also getting the practice in. I take online classes so I can expand my knowledge and be introduced to new techniques. Then I put the time in to practice and practice those. Painting is one of those things that you're only gonna get better by painting. I know, I wish there was a magic pill as well. <laughs> Next question is, have you ever tested watercolors you weren't happy with or that you wouldn't recommend buying? I only have particular watercolor colors that have been disappointing, like the Daniel Smith's Lapis Lazuli and also the Golden Silver from Holbein. That's very, very disappointing. Don't bother with those. But like overall brand and range of colors i've been quite happy with all of them so far next question is do you get homesick sometimes to japan and what do you do to get over it yeah i totally do homesick is something you don't get over is what i've learned from 20 odd years living in another country from where i was born it, you don't get over it because you are missing a big chunk of who you are you learn to cope with it, you learn to live with it, and you learn to enjoy where you are living, but you will always miss where you've come from. I haven't been back in Japan for two years now, and I've really, really been missing Japan for about a good six months now. Like, I really, really miss being in Japan. But the way I get over missing Japan is by ordering some Japanese food ingredients and cooking them at home and eating them because I'm all about food and if I can have Japanese food at home I feel a little bit better. Next question is what are your main income sources as an artist which I think is a great question because as artists we have to have multiple income sources and for me this year has been about setting up those multiple income streams my main income source at the moment is patreon they are wonderful wonderful people on patreon i love my patrons dearly thank you so much and i know people complain about patreon but it's an amazing place it's an amazing tool that has given us a way to easily have a regular income and for that i am incredibly grateful for what they do and i love them to pieces i think what they do is amazing work i then also have a small amount coming in from the ad 
revenue from YouTube. If you're a YouTuber, you know it's not great nowadays. And then I have a small income from Jackson's affiliate links, which goes straight back onto art supplies at Jackson's. And then I have an income from my handmade watercolors. I barely have any money coming in from my own paintings, but that's also my fault in that I haven't been painting to sell and updating my website and stuff. So that is the one bit of my income diagram that I have been slacking on. So I should be getting on with that shortly. Next question is, I would love to know if you were born in Edinburgh or choose to move there. And the answer is I chose to move here with my husband. We both decided we weren't happy where we were living. And it was like, well, we can go anywhere. Where would we go? And we chose Edinburgh because we've been up here a couple of times on day trips and we really loved it. And it gave us way more opportunity living in Edinburgh than where we were before. Next question is, where did you learn to use gauze? And do you have any artwork you can show us using this technique? Yes, I will link a video up here somewhere again where I use the gauze in a painting and you can actually find the link to the course that I learned to use that from in the video because the video was about me learning to paint from what I learned from that course. Next question is, do you only paint with Daniel Smith? No, nope, not at all. I paint mostly with Daniel Smith and Holbein, uh, my two main brands that I use, but I'm totally open to using any brand. Next question is, my only question I have is how to know if a color is cool or warm. What I'm gonna do is link a video again up here somewhere to a video that was done by Steve from Mind of Watercolor that explains cool and warm best. It's a good video, so check that video out. Next question is, how do you make your videos? You have really good lighting. One thing I struggle with is having a camera phone cast a shadow each time recording something. Okay, so this is really easy and I can teach you because I am fully trained in theatrical lighting at National Youth Theatre. It was a random thing I did when I was a teenager. I was got really, really into theatrical lighting. Um, it was my first like actual thing I was good at at school. And then I got the chance to train at the National Youth Theatre, which was an amazing experience. This problem is a very simple problem. The reason why you are casting shadows on what you're trying to film is because you have your camera here and your light is behind it. So your camera is pointing that way and your, cam your light is pointing this way. That's gonna cast a shadow. What I have is say I have the camera here with whatever I'm filming down here, the light needs to come from this side, facing that way, okay? That way you're not gonna get a shadow from your phone because there's nothing happening here. That's all you have to make sure is that you don't have light or if you have light like in your ceiling and things, then make sure it's either turned off or you have brighter light happening here. And for lights, I just use these LED panel things. They're really, really good and they're very affordable and they're very bright and you have full control of how powerful those lights are going to be and temperature and stuff. So I highly recommend this. I'll leave a link down below to where you can buy one of these or where I bought one of these from. Next question is what brand of watercolor would you like to try that you haven't already? There's so many brands I haven't tried because as earlier I said, I've been really focusing on Daniel Smith and Holbein and Snelly and stuff. I am starting to get into Schmincke. The big color showdown is gonna have Schmincke colors. So I've actually bought my first Schmincke tube colors. I'm very excited to try them. Besides that, I'm just really, really fascinated to try all the brands now that I've kind of got Daniel Smith out of my system. I would love to try the Van Gogh. I know it's a student quality one, but I've heard good things about them, so I'm willing to give that a go. I want to try Da Vinci. The Renaissance one looks great. 
over on Ev's channel and I want to try more of Turner colors and Mission Gold colors as well. Next question is how long does it take to dry your homemade paints in the pans? It really depends on weather, temperature and humidity. It takes weeks. It takes many, many weeks to dry. What we do is we pour a little bit of paint into a pan and then let that dry for like two, three weeks and then pour another layer and let that dry for another two, three weeks. And sometimes you have to do three layers, which is why I can't produce paints constantly because of the waiting period that has to happen between pouring the paints and the paints being dry enough to actually post in the mail. Next question is, where did you get your art education? Online, on YouTube and online classes. I've had no formal art training except for GCSE art when I was like 15. That's when my art education started. And I did try to dip my toes into going to art college because we have a fantastic art college in Edinburgh. And I tried their classes and I just did not get along with formal art teaching. Whereas I get on so much better with online classes and video format teaching. Next question is, do you notice a difference between paintings during a down cycle as opposed to those painting when in an up mood cycle? I do. It's actually opposite of what people think. A lot of people think if I'm depressed, I'm going to paint with dark colors and gloomier painting. And when I'm manic, I'm going to paint with manic bright colors. It's actually completely the opposite. When I am depressed, I love painting with bright colors because that helps me feel better. And I use art to feel better. And so that's what I do when I'm depressed. And then when I'm manic, I paint more serene paintings with more calmer colors because that's what I want to feel is just calm down the manic energy. But you'll definitely be able to tell what mood I was in when I painted it just by looking at the painting. It's just opposite of what you think it's going to be. Next question is, what are the colors in your palette? I will link, uh, I still haven't figured out which side it is. I'm going to leave a link here or here of the video that shows you exactly what colors are in my palette. Next question is what would be the next medium you'd like to try? That would be gouache. And as I explained earlier, I'm just waiting to go to Japan so I can pick up some cheap Holbein gouache. Next question is what would be your ideal 24 color palette? If you just rewind a couple of minutes and click the link for what's in my watercolor palette. That's pretty much a 24 color watercolor palette. Next question is, what is the most important thing to invest in amongst the three? Paper, paint or paintbrush? I would say paint, but that's only because I'm so into the color. What you should invest in really, really depends on the kind of art you want to create. I don't have to invest in expensive paper or brushes because I'm an abstract artist and I just throw paint on and see what happens so it doesn't really matter whereas if you want to be more into the illustrative style and you want to be able to have really fine control of what happens on the paper then you really have to get good quality paper and if you really want to do detailed work and have fine control of your paint then you really have to invest on your brush so it just depends on what your priority is and we're done we're done we're through i have no idea how long this video is going to be i've been filming for two and a half hours <laughs> total i'm so sorry at how long this video is going to end up but i just wanted to take the opportunity to answer all your questions i'm so glad i got to do that now for the exciting bit of announcing the winner it was picked randomly by a computer and it is angie wright a fine artist so i'm going to message you on youtube and if i can track your social media i'll message you there as well but if we haven't got in touch before this video goes out then do get in touch my email address is on my youtube about page and then if you could let me know your postal address, then I will send you my palette. I can finally show you the palette because it's all nice and dry. 
this is the palette and Angie you'll be receiving this congratulations for winning this palette and thank you all of you guys for taking part in this giveaway but also the amazing amazing comments you've left in the previous video I've been so touched by them and I've read every single one of them and also for all of you that have shared your struggles with mental health and being a spoonie as well i love you all we're all in it together you're not alone and you're going to be okay okay so that's it for now i think this video is long enough thank you so much for watching this video and kudos to you if you made it to the end and if you made it to the end you clearly are subscribed and stuff so i won't tell you to subscribe and stuff and thank you so thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video bye